Hey guys, Jaden and Nick here from Ice Hockey Aussies here to talk about another trade uh, during the trade deadline. Uh, this in regards to Pittsburgh Penguins uh, mostly and other teams involved being Anaheim, Montreal and San Jose. Uh, starting off at the top, we have Brock McGinn and a 2024 third round pick going to Anaheim and going to Pittsburgh, we have Dmitry Kulikov who gets 50% of his salary retained. And then... We got at the second trade, three teams involved. Uh, San Jose, uh, they get from Montreal, Arvid Henriksen from Pittsburgh, 2023 seventh round pick and a 2024 fifth round pick that says conditional. I couldn't find the condition on it though. So if you find the condition, leave a comment down below. That'd be good. Uh, Montreal, they get from San Jose, Nick Benino, but they don't hold him for long. Uh, Tony Sun, uh, another uh, little signing rights, and 2024 fifth round pick from San Jose. And then going to Pittsburgh is Nick Benino with 50% retained by uh, Montreal. And that is pretty much the trades there. I, It's very questionable. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh re getting Benino. And the Kulikov trade is um, a little bit questionable as well. So, but they're definitely trying to change things up before the playoffs or the playoff run at least uh what are your thoughts nick yeah look i'm 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 a bit confused about it to be honest i know nick benino obviously was there when they won their two cups um and he and he was a, a big performer in one of those cups um but yeah that was seven years ago <laughs> six years ago um you know the guy's 34 years old now um He's sort of, yeah, I guess he's slowly dwindling away as the years go by, as, as most players do. He's still serviceable, um, but it just, it, it does, it confuses me a little bit because they give away someone like a Brock McGinn. Now, Brock McGinn has has put up pretty much the exact same as, as what a Nick Benino has. Um, Brock McGinn also has two years left on his contract compared to a Nick Benino who um, only is a UFA at the end of this year. Uh, I get that Nick Benino can also play centre, so maybe that's one of the the thought processes there is that they'll move um, Granlin to a wing or, or someone else to a wing and play Nick Benino on that fourth line centre. Uh, it just seems that They've given away a lot to not really get a lot. I think Dmitry Kulikov is basically just a, a depth defender for them. Um, you know, he might come in to sort of... I mean, he might come in in replace of Joseph. Uh, but you look at their defensive lineup and, and, and it's pretty set. I mean, they've got... Before this trade, they had seven defenders. Um, and I don't think Kulikov is exactly you know any anything super flash um he's sort of been handed around to a few few teams since he's left uh the florida panthers back in 2016 um so yeah like he's a serviceable player but he's nothing special he's really only that bottom pairing defenseman or if not a, a seventh defender as backup so yeah it's it's kind of underwhelming from a Pittsburgh perspective, I I think um, they give away what a fifth round, seventh round, which doesn't seem like a lot, uh, but they also give away a third round in Brock McGinn, and in return they get Kulikov and Benino, who are both UFAs at the end of this year. So essentially, handing away a fifth round, seventh round, a third round, and Brock McGinn, who had two year, who has two years to run from next year on his contract for essentially two depth players that are UFAs at the end of the season. So I, I'm not a fan of this but from a Pittsburgh perspective. Um, I, I like what Anaheim did. They acquire a player that they can utilize for two years and they get a third round pick and replace for a UFA. I think that's a really good get for Anaheim. And honestly, I think that's, that's 100% a win from them uh, and a loss from Pittsburgh. Uh, as from San Jose and, and the Montreal Canadiens, Montreal basically get a fifth round and a um, and a young uh, uh, young contract signing rights for basically just holding 
Nick Benino's one million cap. So that's that's great from Montreal. I think that's you know, there, there, there's there's nothing there's no nothing they're losing there. They they give away a million dollars for for a fifth and and a, and a prospect. And um, the Sharks get you know as basically nothing <laughs> seventh round. <laughs> so yeah, for for me. Don't get it from Pittsburgh. Anaheim are the big winners. Montreal get get a little something out of it. San Jose don't get a lot. So, yeah, very strange in my opinion. This one. Yeah. So the first trade that I think would have went through was the Nick Benino one. Clearly, they wanted him. Um, I'm guessing San Jose didn't want to retain fifty percent. Um, and that's why they had to go through Montreal. But then, I would have thought you'd ask San Jose to hold 25% or something like that because I believe the Kulikov trade is purely to get under the cap because the Benino trade put them over the cap um, by uh, like 200,000. So they had to go under that the Kulikov trade did that and now they've got like 300,000, I think, um, spare. Uh, in regards to what they get, clearly it's um they're going for it. It's you know, no secret with this type of trade. Uh, they give up a lot to go for it too, uh, with a third, a fifth, a seventh. And some people don't, you know, think picks aren't that good uh, this late. But I still think, you know, they're still lottery tickets. And, um, you know, you still get players like Jesper Bratt and all the other um, really good stars that have come through the past at sixth and seventh rounds, um, even fifth. So, yeah, I, I'm a little underwhelming. They clearly rate Nick Benino very highly. And that's why they've done this. Um, and they've, you know, sacrificed Brock McGinn for it. They get Kulikov um, with a 50% retention to make sure they go over, under the cap. Uh, you know, the winners out of this, I think, Anaheim, they get basically a third for nothing. Uh, because I think McGinn, uh, Kulikov should be somewhat of a straight swap. And then San Jose, uh, they probably win as well. They don't need Nick Benino, uh, UFA. They get some picks. Um, and, you know, Henriksen, who, who knows, may become something one day. Uh, Montreal, they win as well, uh, being, you know, the banker, basically, of the transaction. And then, you know, the question is, do Pittsburgh win? And it's all down to, basically, how they play in the playoffs, or if even if they make the playoffs, um, to if they win this or not. Because, like I said, UFAs, they've paid a lot to, to get it. And, you know, they're at the cap limit now, um, mainly because of, you know, not getting other trades previously retained as well. And that's why they had to do this little bit of extra trading. So a little underwhelming, like you said, for Pittsburgh side of things. Uh, every other team, Anaheim, San Jose, Montreal, I think come out on top. And honestly, it just depends if they make the playoffs and if, if so, how far they go. But yeah, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I the thing I don't like for San Jose's perspective here is that yeah, they get a fifth and a, and the signing rights to Avid Henriksen, who was a seventh round pick. But they also gave up Tony Sund at twenty twenty fourth fifth round pick. So basically, once all is said and done, they got a seventh round pick for Nick Benino. That was it. That's it. That's what they got. <laughs> yeah, but is is expiring UFA? Like I get it. Not many teams yeah. have the salary at this point to take him on. So it was basically no, but, like either get nothing for him or you know get a seventh. That's how I see it. Yeah, and and that's and that's fine. It's just one of the. I just look at it and think, well, you've probably gone down the draft order with that twenty twenty four fifth round pick as well. Um, but that's all Nick Benino's worth, and then the Penguins have just given up Brock McGinn for. Yeah, I just it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, I, I it is conditional, and we don't know the condition as well. So it could true. be say it promotes to a fourth or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, I just I just don't like this for Pittsburgh. I think yep, yeah, Benino was great for you when you won your two cups. That's that's fair. I get that. But it's six to seven years on now. He's six to seven years older. He's not twenty seven, twenty eight years old anymore. He's thirty four. Yeah. And you, I think they're yeah. just trying to relive the uh, Stanley Cup days with that chemistry and whatnot. And that's what they're going yeah. for uh, with that one. I'm guessing Crosby and whatnot, like, you know, they'll ask what player do you need with this amount of cap that we can spend. And they probably went, we want this guy um, from history. Yeah. That's maybe something that's, that's happened. Um, 
but yeah, that, that that's my thoughts on it. Uh, but yeah, a li- little underwhelming for Pittsburgh side of things. Obviously, it depends yeah, how they do, sure. but yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I, that, that's my thoughts. I'm not sure if you've got anything else to add. No, nah, that's it from me. So yeah, I reckon we'll wrap it up here, guys. Um, as always, let us know uh, your thoughts down below. Uh, do you like this trade from any one of these teams? Uh, do you think Pittsburgh did the right move or was it underwhelming as we seem to think? Um, yeah, let us know below. Uh, as always, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, take care. Cheerio.